Hello everybody, Tegan here with High Point. Today I'm excited to talk to you about the Aperture 75Q 0.75 reducer, and then we're gonna take it to dark skies, Bortle 3 skies, and attempt to image the Iris Nebula. So, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and stay tuned as we recap the 75Q, deep dive into the reducer, and really test out its true capabilities under the Milky Way. All right, so first let's briefly touch on the Aperture 75Q. This is an f5.4 quadruplet Petzval refractor, meaning it is a no fuss design telescope. You don't need to worry about critical spacing or back focus like with other refractors on the market. Simply attach your camera, achieve focus, and you are good to start imaging. Utilizing FCD 100 glass, the color correction and optical performance is top notch and yields high contrast images with sharp stars across all cameras on the market today. With a dual speed rack and pinion focuser and a built-in camera rotator, the 75Q has all the features an astrophotographer wants. Now, if you are curious about the Aperture 75Q, we do have a full review deep dive video about this telescope, and we have provided the link to this video in the description below. Now, onto the 0.75 reducer. The Aperture 75Q 0.75 reducer is a thread-on design and has a provision for two-inch filters. As far as installation, it's very simple. Simply remove the knurled adapter from the back of the scope itself and replace it with the 0.75 reducer via the same threads. This reducer is corrected for APS-C size sensors and the 0.75 reduction brings the aperture 75Q from a focal ratio of f5.4 all the way down to f4.0. It takes the 405 millimeter native focal length and brings it all the way down to 303 millimeters, which is nearly identical to that of the Red Cat 61, but this scope has 1.5 times the light gathering capabilities given the increased aperture size. And this is exactly why I am excited to go out and image the Iris Nebula. The Iris Nebula itself is bright, but is surrounded by very dim, dust and gas that is lit not by nearby stars, but by the Milky Way galaxy itself. So you need extremely dark skies to be able to capture something this faint. Having that extra light gathering power under Bortle 3 skies is going to be awesome, and it's really gonna help me capture some amazing details on this incredible target. Well, according to my phone, it's expected to be clear, and if all goes well, I'd like to get six hours of data. Let's get to it. So as you can see, I had a successful night and a half out under Bortle 3 skies. I was able to collect nine hours of data on the Iris Nebula, which is three more than I had originally planned. The 0.75 reducer worked exactly as expected. And if you already have the Aperture 75Q the refractor, the 0.75 reducer is going to be a great addition. If you are a beginner or if you're looking for your next astrophotography package, the Aperture 75Q and the 0.75 reducer is an excellent choice. The reducer makes this already incredible scope even more powerful. The stars across my APS-C size sensor were sharp and as I had expected, the extra light gathering power definitely helped collect some nice data. Having that 0.75 reducer and that extra field of view made all the difference. So with that being said, let's take a look at the Iris Nebula. <laughs> 